You were accused of defending Trump. What happened there? Well, they assumed that I had been Trump's lawyer and therefore I was responsible somehow for everything he had said. Uh, I'm saying exactly the same thing I'd be saying if Hillary Clinton had been elected president and they were trying to impeach or investigate her. The commentators you had earlier were saying, oh, it's a crime to collude. It would be a crime if this happened, if that happened. If Hillary Clinton were sitting in that same seat and they were going after her, these very same liberals would be making exactly the opposite argument. They'd be saying, oh, civil liberties consideration precludes us from cobbling together a case from emails and tweets and all of that. And you can't have obstruction of justice by a president acting and collusion isn't a crime. But because the shoe is on the other foot, because today the investigation is directed against President Trump, who they don't like and who I didn't vote for, they're prepared to stretch the law beyond all recognition. It's really hypocrisy at its very worst. And my job is to expose the hypocrisy and to stand up for civil liberties, just as I would be doing if it were the Republicans that were yelling, lock her up and impeach her against Hillary Clinton. But people don't want to understand that. They don't want to believe that I'm making a principled argument. They have accused me of being bought and paid for by Trump. They've accused me of being subject to blackmail by Trump. They've said I want to be on the Supreme Court and that's why I'm doing it. They say I'm doing it because I support President Trump's policies on Israel. I'm doing it because I'm a civil libertarian. I would do it for anybody, Republican or Democrat. But the one of the panelists uh, said because you're making this civil liberties defense, ipso facto, she made the leap that you're defending Trump. Do you see how the media does that? Distorts? Of course. Look, it happened to me when I was a kid in college and I defended the right of communists to speak. I was a commie simp. When I defended the rights of Nazis to march through Skokie, I was a Nazi sympathizer. That's McCarthyism. The essence of McCarthyism is you blame the lawyer or the defender for the sins of the person or the institution they're defending. And you have to keep a separation. There has to be permission for civil libertarians to defend principles, even if we disagree with the policies. The ACLU ought to, usually did that. But it's failing to do that now because it's making all of its money off going after Donald Trump. Yeah, the ACLU is certainly AWOL on the civil liberties angle. You're right, sir. Let's get to the next case. Trump's former campaign chair, Paul Manafort, his trial kicking off today. Now, anyone looking for evidence of collusion will be disappointed. Paul Manafort faces up to 305 years in prison for bank fraud and income tax evasion. For not paying taxes on the tens of millions he got advising a Ukrainian party starting way back in 2005, he's accused of more, too. Nothing to do with his time working for the Trump campaign. The court filing from the Robert Mueller team says, quote, the government does not intend to present a trial evidence or argument concerning collusion with the Russian government. Alan, your take on the Manafort trial as it relates to President Trump. Well, my take is the same as the judge's take. Judge Ellis said categorically that they're not after Manafort. They're not going after him because they want to put him in jail. They're going after him to squeeze him. They want to make him sing. And as uh, Judge Ellis put it, sometimes witnesses who are squeezed not only sing, but they compose. They make it up. They exaggerate. They tell a better story because they know that the better the story, the better the deal. So this is not about Manafort. This is about trying to get to the Oval Office. And Manafort is being used as a means toward that end. Alan, you know, the Mueller team is uh, there's no collusion charge technically in the law, but there's conspiracy. No. The Mueller team looking for conspiracy charges against campaign workers in order uh, to break the law. Conspiracy with Russia to break the law. That's the legal steps there. Is there a, uh, is there a conspiracy charge anywhere or any, anywhere in the law that says, you know, to influence mm -hmm. a U.S. campaign, uh, you've broken the law? Is there anything that says that in the law? Well, we civil libertarians have often complained about conspiracy being the plaything of prosecutors. They can stretch it beyond all recognition. But I cannot imagine a case that could be brought <clears throat> based on a theory that collusion is conspiracy. In my book, The Case Against Impeaching Trump, I give a hypothetical, the worst hypothetical. It didn't happen, didn't come close. My hypothetical is candidate Trump calls up Vladimir Putin and says, hey, Vlad, I got a deal for you. If you help me become president, I am against the Mesnitsky sanctions, so it'll probably be easier to get rid of those sanctions. And I know you have some dirt on Hillary Clinton. Please get that to me. That would not be a crime. That would not be conspiracy. It would not be collusion. It would be a political sin 
But, you know, as a person who taught criminal law for 50 years at Harvard, you got to show me the statute. Show me where the statute says that that kind of thing is collusion or conspiracy. It isn't there. It's wow. not a crime. It's a sin. Alan Dershowitz, you're terrific. He is the author of the book.